Hey everybody, welcome back to Faraday Research. Uh, I'd just like to thank everybody for all your questions and comments that you guys have been sending my way. Uh, greatly appreciated. Obviously, uh, we're just uh, creating a good discussion on this. So um, every now and then you get uh, a bad comment. Well, not really a bad comment, just a, a criticism. So uh, from the uh, comment, I've come to the conclusion that Okay, what he's, say, he's saying, what I'm doing is pretty much kindergarten work. Uh, it's easy stuff. Okay, but fine. It's, it's a very simple system to make. Very few components, you get a result. Lighting up a neon bulb or a fluorescent tube. So, the, I think where he's kind of gone wrong is the fact that he doesn't know where I'm going with it. Okay, all our devices that we have today are TV... You know, anything that we have, devices, runs off 120 volts or 240, depending where you live, at 50 or 60 hertz, okay? So you got voltage, frequency, and current. Those are the three components that you have to have right in order to run the devices you want to run, okay? So even though that this is a very simple setup, you have to understand, you have to have the right voltage, the right frequency, and the right amperage in order to run a device. Where I'm going with this is I want to make a system where I can run a house with it. Okay, that sounds crazy enough as it is, but it can't be done if you understand the science behind it. Now, this technology is 130 years old. Okay, this is nothing new. And we've never exploited it. Don Smith was the first guy to exploit what Tesla was doing 130 years ago to make a system that we could use right now to run our world. But the powers to be had other plans. But that, that would ha be a radio show all on its own. Oh, by the way, um, I am going to be featured in a talk show podcast uh, this Friday night, uh, about 10.30-ish, 10 o'clock-ish, um, I'll put the link in for the show. Um, I'll be featured uh, guest uh, this Friday night at 10 o'clock or 10.30 Eastern Standard Time. So I'll be interviewed by a couple of guys. One guy's out in uh, Western Canada, and I believe the other guy's from uh, the U.K., but anyways, I'll be on this podcast this Friday night. I'll try to get the link in there in the description later in the week. And then you guys can tune in and listen to the show. And uh, you can listen to my interview. So this will be my very first podcast interview. Uh, the uh, interview uh, offer came to me uh, uh, late last week. And uh, we're kind of working on getting hooked up for this uh, interview. So yeah, looking forward to that. So it should be pretty exciting. Uh, okay, let's get back uh, to what I was talking about. So we need voltage, we need frequency, and we need amperage. Okay, so we've got the foundation of the system. Okay, so now we have to expand off it. So now we have to create current. Okay, and we have to create a means of breaking that voltage down to a usable voltage and frequency. Okay, there's two steps to this. One is the high voltage generation. The second step is going to be the breakdown of that power and build up of the amperage or capacitance in the system and then the delivery. Okay, so we're going to be expanding on this coil. I'll be making a new coil that's larger. Now, we will be able to, it'll be basically almost like a cyclotron where you'll be able to accelerate the electrons within the coil. And then what also is going to help with your output amperage is going to be the capacitance. So if you have enough capacitance in your system, you should be able to drive pretty much any device in your house. Now, the other big factor a lot of people don't understand is you got to have a high frequency to keep these guys full. If you don't, your, your device or whatever you're running is going to crap out on you. So we're going to get into that a little bit later. So um, I just uh, want to push this aside for a minute. And I've written out a couple of things here. Um, one is about um, my inputs. So we're looking at a device that is over unity. 
okay? Over Unity, basically if you have Wikipedia or Google it, what is Over Unity? It's basically you're able to produce more power output than what is going into the system, okay? And we're gonna uh, classify that value as watts. Okay, so for an example, with this high voltage module, I can put five volts DC input, times that by 0.35 amps. That's what it takes to run this little module. I will, uh, my cons uh, basically it translates to 1.75 watts. Now with that 1.75 watts, I have now created 5,200 volts AC at 44 kilohertz. These two numbers are very important, okay? So let's go to the next part. So now we got 5,200 volts. Now say our system is capable of creating 10 amps, okay? I lowballed it. I'm hoping to get 100 amps, but I'm just lowballing it. Okay, so 5,200 volts AC times that by 10 amps, that's an incredible 52,000 watts. Okay, you can do the math. It's volts times amps equals watts over unity by far. So with the 5,200, uh, sorry, 52,000 watts of power, I can take a little piece of that and put it into a small battery bank and sustain my input, which is only 1.75 watts. So right there, you have a loop system that will technically never run out. There is a little trick where you won't even need to use a battery in this. I'll show that later. I have to kind of prove it. Uh, Don Smith uh, was saying it does work. So I kind of have to investigate that one. But for now, just think of, you know, using a 12 volt battery, use um, uh, a voltage limiter, bring it down to five volts and, you know, control your voltage that way. You could even use a motor controller, PWM. They're cheap. You can get them on Amazon for like 20 bucks, 25 bucks. So now we know we got a huge amount of power. We got some amps behind it. This is over unity because... I'm only putting in 1.75 watts and I'm getting 52,000 watts out at, t at 10 amps, right? Now, the voltage, obviously, we're going to have to break it down to 120 volts AC in order to use it. So, right there, this is an over unity system, hands down, by far. So, just to kind of make uh, things understandable, what I'm getting at. The kilohertz is a very key component to making this over unity. And here's how. Okay. We have a bucket of water. Okay. We have a waterfall. That waterfall is the amount of voltage going into the capacitor. So the bucket is the capacitor, which will be able to create the amps that we need for our load. At 44 kilohertz at 52,000 volts, okay, the kilohertz is how many times it's flickering a second. So basically what I'm getting at is I can completely fill the capacitor bank within a nanosecond. So even though I'm drawing a smaller amount of that power out, this bucket will never go empty because I have enough current or flow of power going into the capacitor bank that capacitor bank is what has the amps that's where you're going to get all your amps you also get it out of the antenna and the acceleration of the electrons but basically to fill this bucket is instantaneous it would never go empty and that's where the kilohertz is very important now, when it goes to load, now it's got to get broken down to 120 volts at 60 hertz, or if you're in Europe or whatever, 220 at 50 hertz, okay? So this is basically what I'm getting at. I've got a huge waterfall of water going into a capacitance in a capacitor bank, and from the capacitor bank, this is now where you got your amperage so you can draw off this. No matter how much you're going to pull off this, this bucket's always going to stay full. 
So I think that's the easiest and, you know, uh, metaphorical way I can uh, uh, present it to everyone. Um, some people get it and some people don't understand it, but this is vital. If I can keep that bucket full, I'll never run out of power. I'll never have a device that's going to be starved for power and then it'll just crap out. It won't happen because I'm dealing with a very, very high frequency. So I hope that helps a little bit understand what I'm getting at. There's my numbers. Okay, that's at 5 volts. I can increase that vo this voltage uh, generator. I can put 12 volts in and get 11 kVA. Can you imagine what that number would be if I had 11 kVA going in? Crazy amount of power. So, hands down, it's an over-unity system. It's been hiding in plain sight. Neon transformers, they've been around forever. They're patented. Everybody sees them every day. If you're in the downtown area, you see neon signs going. Well, guess what, people? It's in plain sight. Over-unity devices are all around us. You just Nobody is utilizing it in a way that we can use it for something that's actually useful. Instead of lighting up a light bulb. So, food for thought. Any comments or questions, please send them to me. If I don't respond to everybody you know, in one day, I apologize. I do have to work too. Uh, but anyways, uh, yeah, I have my interview podcast hopefully this Friday. If it's guaranteed this Friday, I will post the link in this video that I'm doing right now. And then everybody can tune in and watch that. I'll be on, I believe, Facebook. And it's also going to be featured on uh, YouTube uh, live stream. And, uh, yeah, we hope uh, that works out and we do the interview. So it'll be 10 o'clock Eastern Standard Time or 1030. We, we have to kind of discuss what we're going to talk about uh, pre-show. So that shouldn't take too long. So I figure by about 1030, I'm hoping that we'll be uh, doing the live stream. So... Yeah, that should be pretty cool. Anyways, uh, thanks for tuning in. If you liked the video, give me a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, give me a thumbs down. Don't forget, bottom right corner is the icon. You can uh, subscribe to my channel. Don't forget to tell your friends. You know, hit the share button. Post it on Facebook. The more buzz we get about this stuff, the better. I'm getting a lot of great feedback. And a lot more comments and questions are coming in. So, yeah, you know, get this information out to everybody. Uh, yeah, uh, that's it for now, and uh, we'll see everybody in the next video.